Exactly a year ago on this day, I embarked on a trip that had changed my life. Assalamu alaikum everybody and welcome to a video where I will be taking you through a journey of my Umrah experience. SubhanAllah, I look back at it now, a year ago, I was in a totally, totally different place to where I am right now. I left on the 11th of February, 2022. And my journey, I believe, starts before that. A few months before that. I was, a, <laughs> I was in a, a dark place. Uh, it's, it sounds very common nowadays, unfortunately. But in 22 years of my life, I never felt like I was in... Yeah, I had um, just gone through a a loss um, in the form of heartbreak. And it was a difficult moment of my life. I like to believe I'm a very strong character, a very strong person physically and mentally, but I discovered I wasn't really strong emotionally because it was the first time I'd probably like, had experienced, yeah, <laughs> I'd experienced some love whatever you want to call it and um losing that person just broke me completely as a man especially who is not so good with his emotions is not so good with speaking up or feeling emotions for a long time i'd always felt kind of emotionless and numb but i had obviously invested all that emotion to another person and thought that there was a future after that heartbreak as many people would, they will distract themselves. They will find coping mechanisms to deal with that pain. But I promised myself I'm not going to do that. I promised myself that I'm going to use that experience of that heartbreak to build myself up, to work hard physically, mentally, spiritually, most important. And I made a promise and an intention to just get as close as I possibly could to my faith, to Allah. And... Subhanallah, like the pain, I can't explain it to you because heartbreak is probably one of the worst pains ever. It breaks you completely because you dedicate so much to giving to someone else and then it just gets stripped away from you. But alhamdulillah, regardless, wallahi alhamdulillah, regardless, that's how I can always say, I believe everything happened for a reason. That heartbreak had drawn me so close to Allah. I would pray countless tajud prayers. I would wake up in the middle of the night and just pray and Especially in sojourn, I would literally cry my eyes out to Allah, just help, asking Him to help me, asking Him to bring me closer to Him, asking Him for just solutions. Because my solutions leading up to that moment of time was working on myself, going to the gym, working on my business, growing myself physically, mentally, financially. I needed to get away from this toxic situation, this toxic environment. Everything was toxic. My emotions were all over the place. My relationship with this person was just all over the place. Everything was a mess. Everything was painful. I was suffering, suffering. So I can't even explain to you how much I was suffering. Like nobody even knew, but I was just suffering. And one day just something just clicked and told me, you know what? Instead of getting on a plane and going on a trip to a holiday destination where you're going to relax, probably go and have fun and do all these things that at the end of the day, once that whole experience is finished, you're going to come back and you're back to square one. You're back in the same problem as if nothing had happened. Probably would have been just an escape to run away from the problems. Alhamdulillah. Wallahi, it's like Allah called me. Allah literally sent that message to me. That click in my head was just literally like, why don't you just go and perform Umrah? Why don't you just go and visit the house of Allah? What's holding me back from going to the house of Allah in a time of need. It leads me up to a year ago today where I packed my bags. I picked myself up after everything I went through. It's crazy because it was the day I went, I was still mixing with that, with that person and I was still, you know, attached. Bro, that pain, bro, imagine, I'm just thinking about that pain I was in, man, raw. Oof. But yeah, I um, Allah, I just, I just left everything behind, and <sighs> yeah, man, 
Cool. Um, I. So we went. Bro, how do I even continue this? I don't even know how to continue. Cool. From what you've gathered from this so far is, for me, my Umrah experience started beforehand. My Umrah experience started with a purpose, which then leads on to during my Umrah experience. We actually went to Medina first, the most beautiful, 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 beautiful place in this world. The most peaceful, the most tranquil, the most welcoming, the most unreal place in this world. A place out of this world, subhanAllah. I can literally think back to the, the days when I was in Medina, waking up for Fajr, three o'clock in the morning, walking to the masjid. The streets were filled with such peace and tranquility and freshness about it. SubhanAllah, you arrive in this place and instantly it's like a, a blanket of nur, blanket of light just goes all over you and just like, here you go, sprinkled all over you. Everything about you just changes when you're there. Visiting the the Rauda, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grave. Oh, subhanAllah. I actually went there with my best friend Yusuf and another brother I met on the trip. It was like three in the morning we decided to go because we didn't want to go when it was all busy. Wow. Praying in the Rauda. It's an experience in itself. I can't I can't explain it to you. Medina's a place where you can sit in a, in a mosque the whole entire day and never get bored and be so happy and fulfilled and content in life that you don't need anything else. That's Medina. <laughs> That's just subhanAllah. That is what Medina is. And I know I know if some of you have been there, you would know what I'm talking about. Medina is Medina. But there was one experience in Medina that really really shook me till this day i say to myself one of the scariest most shaking moment of my life was experienced in medina i'll tell you the story so we were in umrah as a group i went with a group not, uh, called yasin youth tours everyone who was part of the group was just they will remain in your heart forever it's one of those trips where you remember each and every one of their faces in fact let me pop up who these people are you would see them that you know we did we completed this together as brothers we were in medina for fajr this is the first day we were there and it was fajr time and we had the leader who was kind of he was a leader of the group and he had experienced the whole umrah before and had done it many times and he was telling us that after fajr prayer we're going to go and attend the janaza one thing which is honestly when you're in medina and mecca after every single prayer there's always a prayer for the dead. So prayer for someone who's passed away. You know, before ever going to, to Umrah in Saudi, I had probably only ever experienced five, six janazas in my life. Now, when you're in Medina, Mecca, every single prayer, there's a prayer for the dead. And the leader says, after Fajr prayer, they're gonna perform the prayer for, for the dead. And once, once you're finished, you're gonna meet us outside in this specific location that they're gonna go and they're gonna carry the body straight to the grave straight to the grave which is literally by the side of medina if you guys know my head wasn't in it completely i was just like oh yeah cool yeah whatever <laughs> we're just happy to be there and you know we've finished federal prayer after that we did the, the prayer of for the janazah and stuff we all walked out and because there's like five bro when i say there's like tens of thousands of people that it's not like you're hanging around with your group 24 7 whilst you're there you're in you're individually there but when we, when we got told to meet in a specific location Everyone knew that they had to go there. So we've met up the group. The group's all around us. Yep, everyone's cool. The leader's in front of us. And he said, and he kind of pre-warned us before. He said, guys, when these lots bring the body, they're going to bring the body and they're going to come at us very fast. And it's going to be a, a mission. It's a mission, basically. It's, you got to be on your toes. You got to be ready because they're going to bring the body and then it's going to come. And you got to try to grab hold of it because you want to be a part of it. You want to gain as much agile as possible. And you're going to go that way towards the, to the grave. And so I was standing there kind of like looking at my leader, right? And waiting, waiting, waiting. And then suddenly he goes, points out towards a far distance. It was so far away, yet so close. And he's like, guys, get ready. They're bringing the body. And when I say to you, right? <laughs> Every time I experience this, I get such... I get goosebumps, but lie, bro, I can't explain the story, fam. I turn my head around and I see these men just holding on to like three or four bodies, I think it was. 
and they were running and running and running and I looked towards him and almost like in my in my heart I felt like because he's our leader we're gonna follow his footsteps and there was a sense of comfort that he's the guy who's kind of like there with us and that's guiding us and that's protecting us in that moment of time but as soon as I looked at him and then I turned, aw- turned towards these people who were bringing the body they had come at us so fast they were running with the body wallahi they were actually running with the body yeah before i even had like the time to just process it yeah i turned around to the leader and he left us and like he just left like he just ran ran towards them just like completely left us behind yeah and subhanallah like for some reason for some reason like that moment of time shook me so much to the core because it just made me feel like abandoned because everyone in our group was just so stuck and confused he had left us he was running for his life these lots are coming with a dead bodies guys they're running 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 it just made me think about the day of judgment when your parents your parents are gonna literally leave you behind mothers who are pregnant are gonna ha- experience miscarriages because of their fear oh. Oh. Subhanallah, like, every soul is going to taste death, can't explain it. I just froze and I just, like, tears was just coming down my eyes. But I just held it down, right? And I was just like, one day, our parents, our friends, our family, on the day of judgment, they're going to run. They're going to run and they're going to leave you behind. It's a moment where every person for themselves, I had no choice but to just run. And I just felt like we were running. Just It just felt like we were just... <sighs> ah, man. Allah, Day of Judgment is scary, bro. Allah, man. They say on the Day of Judgment, we're going to be drowning in our own sweat. Can you believe that? So many people, thousands of people just running, 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 right? You just see it and you're just grabbing a hold on there as much as you can, trying to hold the body, trying to help to... To, to get the body to, to the grave you get to this grave and it's just hundreds if not thousands of just stones in the floor stones everywhere mist is in the background and you just hear like a silence everything just happens so fast the silence just is then interrupted with brothers who are literally just digging 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 and you hear the, the mud being thrown and then there's a hole and suddenly then after the hole it's empty suddenly there's a body inside the hole and then suddenly after the body's put into the hole suddenly we're all throwing mud all over the hole and then suddenly in in the space of two minutes the hole is covered and that person is just that's it it's done everything's just done it's just like that's it your life is completed your life is just it's just there it's just a hole and then after that i literally just remember like literally just just looking around and just like what is life what is life if we're all just going to end up in the grave, in a hole where strangers are literally just going to throw mud all over your over, over your body and like you're just going to be covered in a simple white cloth. It's just mad. You don't see any expensive cars. You don't see any of your houses. You don't see any of your luxury goods that you've attained in this life come with you except just you, the dirt on the floor and a piece of stone to just resemble that yeah that's a hole where you've been buried subhanallah that experience man and may allah protect us in the grave and may allah just protect us on the day of judgment as well but that was what i would say the highlight of my medina it was just awakening moment don't get me wrong the best best place in the world the most peaceful the most everything was just beautiful you know everything was just so peaceful and it just wow i just move on to mecca straight away from the get-go when you arrive in mecca you realize there's a massive difference to medina mecca is a whirlwind of chaos and 
just busy everything is busy there's so much happening but anyways we traveled to mecca from medina we did the journey by coach on the journey we were doing all the لبيك اللهم لبيك the talbiya. We were all dressed in our ihram. It was like a five-hour journey. We arrived in Mecca. We dropped. We checked into the hotel. We dropped our stuff. The hotel was amazing, by the way. We had a talk with our group, and the, you know our leader kind of gave us this like prep talk to make us understand what we were actually doing and why we had come there. Because the whole point of going to on this trip was to perform umrah. We walked to the masjid. Our leader prepped us and told us that before you walk in and witness the Kaaba, he wanted us to have our heads down. The moment we look up, he wanted us to make a dua, an instant dua that it's known that when you make that dua, it's it's like it's gonna get accepted. Let's just say I just thought of all that pain. The reason why I was on that trip, I just thought about it in that moment of time. I just knew what I had to ask for, and it was very personal to me, and it was very, it was very deep. Everything I went through. Led me up to that moment right there. I just look up, and just I started crying. I broke down into tears. Um, everyone around me after that as well broke down into tears because they just felt what I'd felt, but. I made my dua and it just felt like all the pain just went. <laughs> it just felt like every everything just disappeared. I tell you what, a big reason why I cried actually as well was because for 22 years of my life, I went to so many different places in this world. No matter where I was in this world, I always made sure to pray towards this direction. In that moment of time, I just kind of had like this flashback. All different types of places I had prayed in, whether that was at home or in mosque or in that place or at work or in that country when I was on holiday when I was young or in all the different places on this earth, I've always been facing towards this one direction. And now I'm here. Now I'm here, like it's in front of me. Been facing my whole life without ever seeing it but trusting that i'm i'm fa i'm facing i'm praying towards this direction and now i'm here i was so overwhelmed by that idea after that do your tawafs you do your seven tawafs and there was a specific route on the on the on the, you know as you do your tawaf that you just have to do a specific dua which is and then after that you got all these duas that you're making and then you repeat that and then you're making all these duas and i just remember making so much dua for so many things everything you've got built up just imagine you're just vomiting everything out all different types of people around you you've got people from kazakhstan you've got people from somalia people from bosnia china everybody's just there to worship everyone is dressed in the same clothing you're you're nothing you've got this white ihram around you it went by so fast like i was just like going around going around going around not realizing that take your time like yo slow down and stuff and you finish that you know, you go in the run between Safa and Marwa, where you go from one mountain to the other, one mountain to the other, and there's one specific section where you gotta run, where there's like a green light above you, you gotta run. Like after that, you go straight to the barbers, you sit down. <laughs> I remember this was funny. Was leading up to the trip, right? One thing that was kind of scaring me about Umrah was the whole like shaving your head bald. I was like, oh, like, I don't want to be bald. I have nice hair. I don't, it's embarrassing. Because you realize that like, nothing else matters in this life. Like all your worldly problems, all your things that you think about, it's like, pff, it's just like a dust. It just, pff, just disappears. You sit down, wax off all your hair, just shaves it off. Bold, bold, bold. And then you just feel happy. The best achievement, best, the best thing you've ever done in your life. And the brothers around me made it even better. Like, that's it. You just think to yourself, like, Alhamdulillah. Mecca was beautiful, man. The masjid was huge. It's like, they can't explain to you the size. Favorite, favorite reciter was Sheikh Meher Al Mu'aqli. And his voice and recitation, whilst you're praying, like, your heart just, just like, just drops. Like, it's, it's to the point where you want him to continue the prayer longer. Like, you, you don't want it to finish. The most beautiful place on earth. You think to yourself, like, really, how is Islam? Just how can it not be the truth? Handed back into the UK automatically, and I'm gonna warn you guys automatically, you fall into this kind of like 
this like post umrah depression let's just say let's just call it that it's like you look around everywhere nothing has meaning anymore everyone's just lost there's so much corruption there's so much negativity alhamdulillah wallahi there's one thing that when you come back allah's magic starts to just work in fact i forgot to mention before i left mecca in fact this was a really special moment for me i wanted the last prayer before i left was right front row of the cab that moment of time i thought to myself everyone around the world that's praying isha right now i'm at the frontest row of every single prayer that's happening right now in this world i finished praying pray myself to istikhara and i'm gonna make it my final prayer before i leave that prayer was for that person i asked allah and this is the power of salat istikhara if that person is good for you for your religion, for your for your for your akhira, for your life and right now and bring them closer to me. And if they're not good for me and if they're not good for my for my you know my for my religion, for my afterlife, take that person away from me. I come back and subhanAllah like Allah instantly showed me all the signs I needed. Completely just letting go of that person. I came back and Allah just literally showed me that that's it. Like that person's not good for you. Alhamdulillah, wallahi like now looking back at it, Allah literally just saved me. I grew as a person to the point where I didn't need that person anymore in my life. I became physically, mentally, spiritually, and now emotionally strong. And that was worth all the pain that I'd gone through. I'm just so grateful for everything that I went through. I tell people when you're going through hardship, remember that time heals everything. A year ago, I would never imagine I'll be sat here right now making this video saying to myself that I've overcome the hardship that I was in. And it tells you that you who are listening right now, you will overcome that pain. You will recover. You will get stronger. Time heals everything. Growth allows you to let go of people that you once thought you couldn't live without. There's my own experience. I hope I gave that realness to people who are either going through hardship right now, who are thinking of going to Umrah, who even just want to get closer to Allah, making the intention of becoming better. And I hope that this video helps you guys. It's been your boy, Voice of Idris. Yeah, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to share this video. Comment down below something, whatever it may be. And a message to yourself, a message to somebody, a message to me, whatever it may be. Inshallah, this video reaches out to more people. This channel can continue to grow and we can reach more and more and more people, inshallah. It's been a boy, Voice of Idris, and I'm out.